Hello everyone, let's try to be a cheat code ninja today. In this problem, we are given an array containing positive integers and we are also given a positive integer k. We have to partition the array into two ordered groups such that the sum of elements in both the groups should be greater or equal to k. And we have to return the number of such partitions that we can form. In this example, if we take these two partitions, the sum of each of them is greater than or equal to 4, so they are valid partitions. If we interchange the order of these two groups, then they can be considered as different partitions, so each pair of group will add 2 to a result. We have 3 such pairs and the answer will be 6. Let's try to come up with an intuitive solution for this. Let's take a look at the same example. Let's see what makes a valid pair of partitions. If we consider these two groups, the sum of the first group will be 6 and the other one will be 4. Both of them are at least 4, so this partition is valid. Similarly, if we consider these two groups, the sum of the second group will be 7, which is valid, but the sum of the first group will be 3, which is less than 4. So we cannot consider this partition. Let's see how we can find the sum of both the groups by keeping track of only one of the groups. If we sum all these four numbers, then the total will be 10. So when we keep track of only the first group, its sum is 6. So for the remaining group, we can derive its total by subtracting the sum of the first group from the total of all numbers. So we'll just keep track of the first group. The sum of the second group can be derived from it. In this case, the second group has the sum greater than or equal to k, but the first group has a sum smaller than k. So we have to consider all the subset of this array and using its sum, we can calculate the sum of the remaining group. Let's count the total number of subsets we can have. For each number in the array, we have two choices, whether to include it in the subset or not. And the total number of permutations possible for this will be 2 raised to the power n, where n is the size of the array. Let's consider the subset where no element is included. In this case, the sum of the remaining group will be 10, which is valid, but the sum of the subset will be 0, which is invalid. Similarly, if we consider this subset, the sum of the remaining group will be 9, and the sum of the first group will be 1, which is invalid. When we consider this subset, both the groups formed will be valid. The time complexity of this would be O of 2 raised to the power n because we have to consider each and every subset. Let's try to optimize this. One thing you can observe is that we are only interested in the subsets which have a sum of at least k. So to determine if the subset is valid or not, we keep on adding numbers till the end to see if the sum is greater or equal to 4. Since there is no limit for the maximum sum allowed for a subset, there is no option but to consider all the permutations of the numbers to the right. So when the sum is greater than or equal to 4, it is just a condition to check if the subset is valid. And since the allowed sum has no upper limit, we don't have any end condition so we'll have to consider all the permutations. For example, in these subsets, even though we have elements included in it and the condition may already have been satisfied, but the total number of subsets can only be determined only after considering the possible permutations for the remaining numbers. Let's see how we can work around this challenge. Since we are interested in the subsets which have a sum of at least 4, this value can also be derived by subtracting from the total number of subsets possible the number of subsets with a sum less than 4. Let's see why counting the number of subsets with a sum less than k is more helpful. In this case, we can start with the smallest subset possible and we can add elements to it till the sum is less than k. Whether this subset will contribute to the count only depends on the present value inside it and we don't have to consider all the permutations of the remaining numbers. Please note that this only works because we are given in the problem that we have only positive integers in the array. So when the sum of a subset becomes greater than or equal to k and since all the numbers remaining are positive, no permutation of remaining numbers can make the sum less than k. Hence we can stop looking forward. These are all the subsets with their corresponding remaining groups such that the sum of our first group is less than k. 
we have five pairs in total and if we interchange the order of these two groups such that our original subset becomes our second group we can consider them to be two different groups this is true for all the pairs so for each subset where the sum is less than k they can be a part of either the first or the second group hence we can multiply this count by 2 to get the subsets with a sum less than k the total number of subsets possible is 16 so we'll subtract 10 from it to get our answer there is one corner case that we have to consider if we have a very large value for k then it may be possible that all the possible subsets have a sum less than k for example the sum of this array is only 10 so any of the 16 possible subsets will have a sum less than k so if we multiply this by 2 it will be 32 and when we try to subtract this from the total possible subsets our answer will be negative if we observe carefully that there are no two groups possible with a sum of at least k because the value of k is very large the answer should be zero so whenever our answer becomes negative we'll return zero let's see how we'll find the total number of subsets with a sum less than k if we consider this whole array then the sum should be less than 4 we have two possibilities for each number the most obvious one is if we do not consider any number then the sum will be less than 4 for first number we have two choices let's see what happens when we include it since we'll be using it to calculate our sum the sum from the remaining array should be less than 3 let's see what are our choices the most obvious one is if we do not consider any of the remaining elements then the sum will be less than 3 if we also include the second number the sum will still be less than 3 since we also have to include its value now the sum from the remaining part should be less than 1 the very obvious choice is not to include any of the remaining elements we cannot include 3 or 4 because we are looking for a sum less than 3 so there are no more possibilities so when we decide to include 1 there are two subsets with a sum less than 4 let's consider the case where we don't include 1 so for the remaining part we are still looking for a sum less than 4 when we come to the second element we have two choices whether to include it or not let's take the scenario where it is included so for the remaining part we are looking for a sum less than 2 again the very obvious choice is not to include the remaining elements and since we are looking for a sum less than 2 we cannot include 3 or 4 now let's take the scenario where both the first and the second element are not included so for the remaining part we are still looking for a sum less than 4 for the third element we have two choices whether to include it or not let's see what happens when we decide to include it so now for the remaining part we are looking for a sum less than 1 since 4 cannot be included in this scenario this is the only possibility since we are looking for a sum less than 4 even if we consider 4 to be alone then also it will be invalid so we found 5 subsets we'll multiply this by 2 and then subtract it from 16 this problem can be solved either recursively or by using a dynamic programming solution where we consider two scenarios when a number is included or when it is skipped the time complexity of this would be o of n into k because for each number we have to consider k possible scenarios depending on the previous sum this part will make more sense when you see the coding solution and the space complexity would be o of n into k because we'll be storing all these values to avoid recomputation let's implement our solution let's keep a variable for the length of the array now let's define our recursive dfs function which takes two input parameters the current index and the current sum so far we'll first write our base condition if we have reached the end of the array and since we are considering the cases where the current sum is less than k this will be a valid subset so we'll return one we have to consider two scenarios the first one is when we decide to skip our current element in this case our current sum will remain the same and we'll call the dfs function for the next index for the second scenario we have to consider when we include our current element we'll initialize this value to be zero this is because we'll only consider it if the sum of our current element and the current sum is less than k in this case we'll add the current element to the current sum and we'll call the dfs function for the next index 
This will represent the count when we include our current element. And finally, we have to return the sum of these two counts. To avoid recomputation, let's make sure to cache the results. We'll use the inbuilt Python library to do this. This could have been done manually by using a hash map. So for counting the total number of subsets with a sum less than k, we'll call DFS on the 0th index with the current sum as 0. And since we have to take the twice of this value, we'll multiply it by 2. We have to subtract this number from the total number of subsets, which will be 2 raised to the power n. And since this value can be negative if the value of k is large, we'll take a maximum of this and 0. It is also given in the problem to mod our result by this constant. We can return this directly. Let's submit our solution. You can see our solution is accepted. If you have any doubts or concerns regarding this solution, please mention in the comments. If you thought this video was helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more such content. Thanks for watching.